But you can go ahead and turn to Luke chapter 2, the great Christmas story. We'll be standing in a moment to read that. I want to emphasize a few prayer requests. You have many on your, on your list today. Um, you saw down at the bottom of the front page, I got to speak to Carlos early in the week there, the losing of his grandfather, Juan Carrillo. And uh, we pray for the dear family at this time. And also in the nursing home, uh, Roy Newton, over the VA, he's had uh, sickness this past week and trouble. So the family asked special prayer for him. And uh, there are many others. We'll talk some more about prayer, special prayers tonight as we seek the Lord. Let's stand together now as we... I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We, we need to pray. We need to pray. Okay, let's bow in humble prayer. <clears throat> Our Father, we are so thankful to be in your presence here today. Uh, as we've said before, the simple wonder and joy of the great carols and songs of Christmas, and especially these beautiful poems and hymns uh, and songs that speak to our soul about the birth of Jesus. What a, what a marvelous God and a great God you are. And we thank you as we remember back of Joseph and Mary, the, uh, this wonderful faith and commitment to you, Lord, and humility, just the brokenness of their heart and humbling themselves before the Holy God and listening and believing and then obeying uh, your word to bring forth uh, the only begotten Son of God, Jesus. And I pray today for all of us here, we come with many, many concerns as we celebrate this wonderful season. We remember uh, to honor you, to worship you, in spirit and in truth. And God, whatever is taking place in our lives today, right now, I pray that we get focused on your word and your son Jesus and how great you are today. I want us to think about your wonderful presence and to know that as we share in this house of God together, have come together as your people and visitors and friends that our hearts are ready to feel your mighty presence and we know that you're with us today and father we want uh, to share this good news uh, as we go about our daily life in these weeks about this gift of a baby it's more than a babe he is the son of god the savior christ the lord and i pray that our hearts are open to that and Lord, you give us many, many opportunities to pour out our hearts to others. And Father, today we want to thank you and ask a special blessing on those who are hurting this Christmas season, and the loss of a loved one in the past year, and others here even now experiencing times of hard sickness and brokenness of their body. Oh God, we pray for a special touch from heaven above that you would meet them at their hour of need and there can be other not only physical needs but others hurting today in many many ways so Lord show yourself strong and mighty would you as we humble ourselves in your presence and we thank you and praise you in that wonderful name of Jesus the Savior of the world and all of God's people said Amen. Amen. Let's stand together, would we? Luke chapter 2. Hear the word of God. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. 
And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying, which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. And yet God bless this great Christmas story. You may be seated. The God of wonder. You ever had a special gift that you really wanted? Especially at Christmas time. The story is told about a little boy. He said, I want a wristwatch. He kept telling his dad over and over and over again. His dad said, son, if you say it one more time, you will not get your watch. Well, at supper time, it came and Usually at supper during the Christmas time, the family repeated a Bible verse, memorized it, and asked the blessing, each one who did that. Well, the little boy was eager to say what the verse he read and, and uh, memorized, and here it was. Mark 13, 37, and what I say unto you, I say to all, watch, watch. That little story makes us, you know... It's amazing how the Lord works in little children, isn't it? We all like gifts and presents. But many times we want a special gift or the right gift. Well, the God of wonder sent a special gift. Just the right gift. His only son. It's a personal love gift sent from the realms of glory. It's a great song says. He's a living gift. Born of the Virgin Mary, this only Son of God, born in a little town of Bethlehem. The Apostle Paul said something about this great gift in the first century. He's writing to the church in Corinth in 2 Corinthians 9, 15. Thanks be to God for His unspeakable gift, indescribable gift. You, you can't explain it. It's so wonderful. What do you think about God's gift of Jesus. I want to say today the God of wonder provided first of all a humble bed. A humble bed, a manger. Now, let's think, there's Mo Joseph and Mary on this long trip from Nazareth to Bethlehem back to the roots. Why did they have to go back? In verses 1 through 7 we saw Serenius got the message from Caesar that the whole Roman world should be taxed. Now Rome controlled the world. They had all power in political power. He ordered the census. You know what that was for, don't you? Taxing. Don't you just love that word? Tax you here and tax you there and tax you when you're dead. You know, it tax everywhere. And that's what Rome wanted. And picture people everywhere as they came to the little town of Bethlehem. Joseph and Mary had to come because 
of their ancestral lineage. The animals, their belongings, families, relatives, individuals everywhere seeking some little place to spend a night or two or whatever to uh, make their census and write their record down, their names. But they arrived, the Bible says in verse 7, there was no vacancy. There was no room. But God had a room. God had a special room. He always has something special for His plan. Did you know that? He has a perfect plan. Well, Joseph and Mary, very worn and weary, and he said, follow me. And I should see them taking him out to an animal stable. Now, what do you think about that? Someone told you and your wife that you have no little special place that you can get with your family. We just got to go to the animal stable. An animal trough to feed a manger. So old wooden trough. And there's the hay which provided warmth. Well, that's where they went. God had a plan. This God of wonder. I remember the story about the church Christmas play. It was a pageant they had. And it had the story of Joseph and Mary coming down to the inn. And one boy wanted to be Joseph and he couldn't get the part. So he got very, very upset. He was assigned to be the innkeeper. I don't know what age he was. He's just a little boy. It says, in the night of performance, Mary and Joseph come walking across the stage to tap on the door of the inn. So he tapped on the door and the innkeeper opened and there's the boy standing. He's mad now. Just remember, you're mad at Christmas and you're representing uh, the innkeeper. He said, what do you want? He said, we need a room. My wife is going to have a little baby. He said, well, I'll tell you what. I've got a room for you. He threw the door wide open, said, come on in. Y'all give you the best room in the little house. Well, poor little Joseph and Mary, they knew that was wrong. Everybody knew it was wrong. But he did it on purpose, you see. And so poor little Joseph said, mm, what is he going to do? You know, thinking in his mind, can't you see the little fellow? He thought quickly, he looked inside the door, and he said, no wife of mine is going to stay in a dump like this. He said, come on, little Mary, we're going out to the barn. So everything got back on track, you know. Well, it's a cute little story. But our God of wonder provided a gift, a lowly place, a special place for the birthplace of His Son. A special room. Just an animal barn, a stall. A, and there that humble bed. What does the manger teach us? It says something about humility. Are you a humble person? I pray to God that you will search your heart this Christmas and ask God to say, Lord, I want to be humble like Joseph and Mary. I want to really see how great you are and how little I am. Sent to that humble bed to identify with us. God with us. That's what it says in Matthew 1, 21. And follow. Emmanuel, God with us. We ought to allow God's Spirit to look inside our selfish rooms today. Got a room of pride? What about power? Possessions? Greed? You could keep going down a list this Christmas. You think about it. We sing the Christmas carol, Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth do what? Receive her king. Let every heart prepare him room. Can you say that? Prepare him room. Have you prepared a room for him? Do you know him? Are you trusting him? Do you understand the gospel that in that little manger was God who came to us, died on a cross, an old wooden cross later at Calvary, paid our sin debt, took your place and my place, put His righteousness into your place of judgment and said you can be forgiven. Do you know it? Do you know Him? The God of wonders sent Jesus through a humble bed, a manger. Secondly, as we think about this gift of God, our gift of wonder was a baby boy. 
the Savior. Verses 8 through 11. How many like little babies? You love little babies? They can't talk back, can they? That's one thing we like about them. Now we got a, the little grandbaby that's five, and she's talking. She is talking so fast, and so full of herself, and just a, just a joy to see expressions you know, on her face. But think of a little baby. We got a great niece who was born in last March, got a great nephew born in August. What, what a beautiful sight that is. But turn the clock back. 2,000 years to that little town of Bethlehem. The angel came to Mary. That which is conceived in her womb is called Jesus, Luke 1 and 31. Mary's song of praise, Luke 1, 47. I rejoice in God my Savior. Luke 2, 10 and following, we just read, the good tidings of great joy, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. As we picture this special baby boy, his name is Jesus. He shall save His people from their sins. In the Garden of Eden, when Adam and Eve sinned, it set the stage for sin and later death, physical and spiritual, a separation from Holy God. We broke His laws, His commands. We rebelled against Him through this sin nature our original sin nature. God said, I've got a plan. And so the cry echoed through the Garden of Eden. You need a Savior. Which you would turn from your sins and turn to Him. Then came God's chosen people later, Israel. The Jews offered sacrifices during their special feasts for their sins. Animals, lambs, and bulls and goats. They cut them and the blood was taken and sprinkled at the high priest, by the high priest, at the holy of holies of the temple. Poured it on that mercy seat, an atonement, a covering to cover the sins of the people. It took the blood of the sacrifices. But the cry kept ringing. Even down through the temple, you need a perfect lamb. You need a perfect savior. No animal will do. And God knew that His gift of salvation would be through this babe of Bethlehem named Jesus. Centuries passed and the kingdom of the world rages against our Lord Jesus. Even this hour, so many are focusing on all kinds of religions. I can make my way to God. You have your way to God. I have mine. Any belief is fine as long as you're sincere. Well, you just check that out a little closer and see. And the cry kept ringing throughout history and through the ages. You need a Savior. A perfect Savior. People focused on governments. Well, they had a government then, didn't they? Rome was in control of everything. The emperor, he's God. He's Caesar. He's called Lord. Worship Him. The Christians said, no way. Jesus is Lord. you believe that? Do you know Him as Lord? Is He central in your life? But the cry kept ringing. The government cannot save. The government cannot take away our sins. Modern philosophies, groups of all kinds, religious groups, make up all kinds of philosophies. They all fall by the wayside and the cry keeps ringing out today. Turn to the Savior, Jesus, born in Bethlehem. Do you want the truth? We're not going to have better individuals. You're not going to be a better person by wanting to be a better person today. Do you know that? Just thinking about being a better person. We won't have better families. We're not going to have better churches. Not just by thinking about it. Not going through some process of man. 
There won't be any better hope and peace in our hearts. There won't be better wisdom and decisions made until, until we see our need of the true Savior, the one Savior. The cry rings out today. He came to lift us out of our sin and darkness into His marvelous light until our hearts are changed. They're transformed by the Holy Spirit of God. It's called conviction. We're convinced that there is a great need. This baby boy, the Savior, Christ the Lord, He's the only one. Until our minds are renewed, let this mind be in you which is also in Christ Jesus. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind, Romans 12, 1 and 2. Is your mind clean today? Washed? Let's say the word forgiven through the blood of Jesus at the cross. You trust in the Savior? Born as a babe of Bethlehem in the manger? One who lived and died and rose again. He lives. That's why you can trust Him. And love Him. As that song said, Mary, did you know that your baby boy will save our sons and daughters? Did you know that He's come to make you new? New. New. This baby boy is the Lord of all creation. One day he's going to rule the nations. Heaven's perfect lamb. This sleeping child you're holding is a great I am. This is God in human flesh. That's the incarnation. That's the message of the gospel. God came to us. Abides with us. Emmanuel. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, Savior, which is Christ the Lord. So as the cry rings throughout history, have you heard the cry? Do you trust Him? Have you turned to Him? Turned from your sins? Trusted Him? Thirdly, today, God sent a wondrous message with the angel's song. Glory to God. In the highest in peace. Peace. Verses 13, 14, the angel, the heavenly hosts were praising God. Almighty God, this God of wonder. When he wants something said that's special, sung, proclaimed, who does he dispatch? Special messengers. His angels. So one, sometimes, five, ten, hundred, thousand, tens of thousands. Boy, what an angel choir. Worthy is the Lamb. Glory to God in the highest. Spread throughout the universe. Peace on earth. I want you to ponder with me a little bit here, would you? Are we going to sing glory to God in the highest and peace on earth in the midst of all this trouble? You know the world's troubled, don't you? People in your family are troubled. Some of you might not know about some of your relatives. Like I said before, I, I don't even know if I know hardly a second cousin. Some of you lived around your first, second cousins, maybe. Or what about even first cousins? How do we know about them? Our own families. Fear of terror. Just several weeks ago, you remember the, our own, uh, America's naval base. Pensacola, Florida. Terrorist. Inside. A world trouble. Lord, where is peace? Uh, I heard this a couple weeks ago. It, I listed it the week of December 8th. It says five police officers 
were gunned down right here in America. I didn't hear about it on the regular news. You may have. I, I don't know that. I'm just saying. Do you know this blessed season? I think about stress and depression, confusion, despair. Where is peace? Of the one who is a prince of peace. You know Jesus' name, don't you? Prophet Isaiah said it 700 years before. His name is Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of... Say it. Say it louder. Peace. Peace. Do you know Him? Uh, I think it was yesterday morning. I was up pretty early there and I uh, flipped on the early newscast. It's our local news and it's talking about one of the veterans, Vietnam veterans down in Asheville, North Carolina. He was at the hospice care there. He's, he's dying. And he sent out a message sometime back there. He got some friends there in the hospital, nurses or whoever. I didn't catch all the little phrases, just a few moments. But he said, I think I'm going to be forgotten. I'm so afraid that nobody will remember me. And so somebody got a hold of this and they started sending down their, their email. And the guys came in. Not just a stack of like 50. They thought maybe 50 or 100 would respond. It's hundreds. Thousand, two thousand, six thousand five hundred. Had a whole, I mean, it was a box load of all these emails. And it, it, it was just like his darkness was turned to light that somebody cared in the midst of all the confusion. God sent those guys to help him and encourage him, and many other people sending their statements. You're waiting for the song, that gift of peace. You don't have to wait for a song. You just remember the true gift, the Prince of Peace, Jesus. Trust Him. Even in Bible times, the threats of war and hatred and suffering were roaming all through uh, the nations of the world at that time. And Rome ruled with the power of the army and the sword. And Isaiah said, I've already prophesied. My God, there's going to be a prince of peace. And I think today, in the midst of our church family, there are those facing grief and sorrow, even over this past year. You may ask, where is the peace? You look to Jesus. I know many of you love Jesus. You're trusting Him as the true peace for your life. And I pray for His comfort and strength for you. But you know, in the midst of the Civil War, the blood covered the hills and valleys of this great land called the United States. Misery everywhere. Families were split and broken on the north and the south. Henry Wadsworth Longfellow penned this great carol, I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day. I want to share two verses. And in despair I bowed my head. There is no peace on earth, I said. For hate is strong and mocks the song of peace on earth, goodwill toward men. Yet peal the bells more loud and deep. God is not dead, nor doth he sleep. The wrong shall fail, the right prevail with peace on earth, goodwill to men. Friends, God is not dead. He's alive, and He's alive through His Son, Jesus Christ, the Lord, our Savior. And he's not caught, caught off guard by the devil's schemes. Evil's going to meet its match in, in the future. We know He met His match at the cross, and then the resurrection. But He's coming again, and He's going to set up His peace, His glorious, peaceful kingdom. Where are you looking for peace today? Another person? Another position, another pleasure, another possession. Come to the Prince of Peace. Repent of your sin. Turn to Christ. Put your faith in His death at the cross and in the glorious resurrection. Trust Him that He gives peace. Justified by faith. Made right by faith. 
We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. He wants to be your Savior. And He wants you to follow Him as Lord of life. Can you do it? I pray you will. And our God of wonder today uses lowly shepherds with a special good news report. A special good news report. Verses 15 through 20. The angel choir in the heavens were speaking of this good news of great joy. The Savior Christ the Lord. And you shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes. These rag cloths, these linen cloths. Probably just strips and bands of old cloth. He placed in that manger, that old rugged wooden animal feeding trough. A saying glory to God in the highest and peace on earth, goodwill toward men. Amazing truth. To whom did the angels give the first announcement? Poor lowly shepherds. Why? Why would he do that? Many of them were despised, other people of their day, treated as outcasts. That's how the grace of God works. He's choosing the shepherds to let all the people know that He works in ways we don't understand. God can take a high person in a position of society. He can take a middle person. He can take a lowly person. That's not the point. He wants to take you today, choose you as its very own, and give you a special good news report. We all have it, you know. It's right here in the Scripture. There are all kinds of reporting today. Morning news, breaking news, headline news, nightly news, liberal news, conservative news, far right, far left, middle road, truth, lies. We're paying attention. You pay attention to all that? I pray not. Pray that you have the wisdom from God to seek God and seek His good news. He has the best news. On that hillside out Bethlehem, God had holy messengers. The angels summoned. It was shocking. Surely it was. Those shepherd boys where they thought about sleeping or looking into the heavens, but when those angels showed up, Glory to God in the highest. Well, what were they to do? Forget it? The good news? It was immediate. Look at verse 15. What did it say? It came to pass the angels were gone away. The shepherd said, let us go tomorrow to Bethlehem. Let's go next week to Bethlehem. Let's go back and take care of the shepherds. Let's now, now, say now. Now. It, they moved. They got up and went. to Check out that special child named Jesus. Just like they were told, they found him. They were living eyewitnesses at the animal stall. Now they became news reporters. Verse 17 and following. They went out. They couldn't, they couldn't keep the wonderful news. The good news of the Savior. They didn't go back to their fields to watch sheep. I guess they put them on hold. They had other shepherds to watch their sheep and fold. They had to move quickly. And pass it from one place to the other, I'm sure. About the little baby. Born in Bethlehem. He's the Messiah. The Savior. Not only personal. Verse 17. He, he couldn't keep it private. They made it public. They published it abroad. It's proclaim it out. Share it. Broadcast it. Send forth the news. They have cell phones then. Television. Radio. Commentators, airwaves, send it out? No. They were just living broadcasters carrying the message. So 
some questions for all of us today at Christmas. What does the story of Jesus' birth mean to me? And how do I report it? Do I give this living broadcast a good news report? Do I do it in word and deed? Where do I do it? Do you do it at home? Do you do it at your workplace? In your friends? In your daily walk of life? I stepped out the other day of the church and I said I need to stop at a place of business and I said, Lord, I don't have a special Christmas track with me. As it was as if the Spirit of God said, you just be obedient and you listen and you share a word for me. That's what I did. Within one minute, I should have had Jesus it being the greatest gift the Savior is born. You see, we spoke... The person spoke of gifts. And I said, it's wonderful to have gifts, but I want to know the greatest gift. That's what Christmas is. Said, yeah, yeah, that's true. You can do that. Simple. You don't have to make up something. It's living. Jesus Christ is alive. He's well. Let's honor Him with the good news reports. Well, we made another journey in the Christmas story. This God of wonder. Did you see any picture of God showing up in smoke and thunder on the mountain that day in Bethlehem? Did you hear about anything like a rumbling earthquake with a mighty voice shouting out? Did you see any rooms in a palace decorated with gold and silver? Just saw a humble place, an animal stall, lowly animals, lowly shepherds. Then later, the wise men came with their gifts at another time. We pause at the God of wonder because God is up to something. God in human flesh, incarnate, in the flesh. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us full of grace and truth. John 1.14 He's the Savior, Christ the Lord. What marvelous grace at Christmas. God so loved the world. He gave. Say gave. Gave. You didn't deserve it. I didn't deserve it. I couldn't work for Jesus. You can't work for Him. Merit his favor is given. And this babe in the manger, God says, He's going to become a Savior at the cross to die for us. What did He die for? We say our sins. Because we're against God. We are enemies with God. We are under the judgment of God. Just think of this day. Outside of Jesus, we are under the sentence of death. Physical, but more importantly, even spiritual, eternal death. He loved you so much that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him, that believing, you, you can't believe your own way. You believe Jesus' way by the way of the cross. He died, paid the price, took your judgment, mine, and He rose again to prove His power and victory. you can be forgiven the grave and hell are cast aside have life eternal forever in heaven you know the Savior today if you don't know him I'd be glad to talk to you just make your way like I said last week down here on this pew on the left side wide open there's a number of you we can go right to the back we'll share about the wondrous Savior and Lord Jesus. Come to Christ. Open your heart. Trust Him. He's your very own Savior. Lord. Maybe you're here today and you become a church member. You haven't come into the part of a church family yet. Maybe you've 
trusted Jesus Christ, even followed in the waters of baptism before, and you understand that you do not have a church home. You think about that, we can help you. Christians here today, I know many of you love Jesus. I'm going to ask you to make a statement to God right now in your heart of hearts, if you really mean it. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. We need to search our hearts today. And only God can do it through His mighty Spirit that you might have a real, true Christmas with the Lord and honor Him. Could you do that, Christian?